Hello everyone, this is Will. This is Alex. Welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Oh baby, mostly. You know, we started 70, 79 at a very low point, okay? And it kept getting low, and it, was, it hit rock bottom for a minute, <laughs> and then we had two good ones, and then one bad one, but man, oh man, oh baby, holy lord it fucking ended on a goddamn high note this my god this was good this is good i legitimately like this movie i mean it appeals to my like lizard brain like monster movie loving like just part of my brain that's like give me more monster movies and monsters fucking shit up and i like that and like just have them destroy shit and it's just like yep it has all of that it is that but then it's like hey we're gonna have social commentary and stuff that actually matters in our movie too <laughs> in a b movie that no one has heard about that uh, no one yeah like and, like it, this movie had no right being this good but i would honestly say we've uncovered another hidden gem it's a it's like an underrated movie that i think a lot of people would actually enjoy yeah like it has there's a lot going on here and it's actually pretty well done i am like legitimately surprised at how well how well done this movie is no i i enjoyed this this is i mean i i i figured i would just because of the little things that we knew and saw before we saw this so i guess we should give some context um you had found a video um online of this movie because i'd heard of this movie this like little clip and and... way back when i heard of this movie i saw i looked it up and i saw the rating and i was like well this is this is gonna be on our podcast one day yeah but i found this clip i i've this is one of the funniest clips i think you've shown me ever it's a clip from the movie where there's a kid in like a sleeping bag and he's like zipped up in the sleeping bag and this fucking monster shows up and the kid like freaks out and starts kind of fucking hopping away in the sleeping bag and the monster just like smacks him and it smacks him so hard that he flies into a fucking rock and just explodes into a fucking bunch of uh like feathers and that clip it's like maybe 10 seconds long and it was just so fucking hilarious and insane now before we get into the meat and potatoes of this Mm -hmm. this b-movie masterpiece um i need to remind i need to tell people and i guess i'll remind them throughout um sorry the beer is getting to me a little bit (laughs) um this movie is pg like yeah (sighs) this rides the line of pg so hard like harder than i've seen in a long time yeah it's very it's it's like it's tap dancing on that 13 line like it's pretty violent for a pg 13 a pg movie i'm not gonna lie so this is before the pg-13 rating oh that's existed. right so it's tap dancing on our line at but point. even then i mean i can't really think of like, any recent pg-13 movies i've seen that have this much like actual on-screen blood and like violence yes um just people getting like m- just mangled beyond recognition like it's it's weird that they were able to show this all on screen and still get away with the pg uh, rating yeah and, like, I get that it was before, like, the PG-13 line, but, like, there's no cursing or anything, so maybe that's how they got away with it. Because, like, no one swears. I mean, I would be, like, swearing up a storm if I saw any of this shit and, like, you know, probably dead. That might be So, it. I mean, I would be shitting my pants. <laughs> like, my God. And I have to also give it to it before we get into it. I have to give credit, like, oh, my God, the... The practical effects in this movie are, like, at times stunning. Like, yeah. it's, it's actually pretty impressive that this much time and effort and energy was given into a movie that no one has heard about. So, are you saying that this is better than The Dark? Oh, dude. Dude, 
How can you even compare these two movies? I don't know. There's, Listen, they I, both take place at night a lot, and there's a monster. At least in the... So this is a... I mean, obviously, I think The Dark... Was that a studio-produced movie, too? Or Pretty sure. It, so, like, The Dark... Like, everything looked just awful and just drenched in just darkness to where it was mm -hmm. disorienting and confusing and you couldn't tell what the hell was going on. In this movie... They set up, <laughs> I know, weird concept. They actually set up shots where you can see what's going on. And the light they're using actually lights the scene. I know, surprise, surprise. Shock. That actually can happen in a movie. It's shocking, Will. I know. It's, in a B it, movie, it's, wow. It's, yeah, I know. It doesn't happen a lot, but it happened here. What a concept. So, Prophecy. This, man, I, I legitimately like this movie a lot. It is this is a good one here, folks. This is a good one. We'll get into it, but like, you go watch it. Like, yeah. again, I implore you, go watch this movie before you hear us just fucking rip into it. Yeah, I think everyone uh... like you should go see if you appreciate monster movies of any kind. If you like underrated B movies, if you like nature. If you like, yeah, nature, things. nature versus like human folly. Like yeah, it just just go watch this movie. It's good. There's a lot of social commentary in it. Um, there's a lot of things going on in it. Um, there's a lot of character development, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, it, a lot of character <laughs> development, and like a really really good monster. Um, really creepy, really well done. It doesn't look stupid at all at any point. Like it just it makes sense for the narrative. It, it just a good movie. Go watch. Yeah. Go watch this movie. You do have to rent it. I might buy it, actually, to be <laughs> honest. I probably will be purchasing this one. Um, but, like, yeah, go watch it before you hear this review. And then come back and then get to the, you know, whatever mark we're at. Yeah. And then come back and um, just kind of gush, uh, like, hear us gush this about it. Gush. Because this one is going to be a gush piece. Yeah. It's, it's not going to be shitting on it. No. Because I have very little complaints with this movie. I uh, Yeah, I only... I don't even. Really, I, I mean, I maybe have like a nitpick, but that's it. There's a few nitpicks that I probably would do, but like honestly, it's not a big deal. Um, it doesn't in any way, shape, or form impact how I felt and uh, how the movie is like as entertaining as it is. Oh yeah. So, um, yeah, go watch. Go watch Prophecy. Don't don't watch the Christopher Walken. Like, I mean, if you want to watch angels, like a war with you angels, can. you can go watch the prophecy. If you want to Viggo <laughs> Mortensen makes a great Lucifer, by the way. So, I mean, I would suggest that movie just because of that role alone. And Christopher Walken as Gabriel is pretty good too. But again, we're not reviewing that movie. We might one day. We might. Hint, hint. I, I actually like that movie though. So, uh, that's fine. But, um, yeah, this is just prophecy. Just prophecy. Um, so go watch it uh, and then come back and listen to our uh, critique and review of it. Yeah. So here we go. Commentary on Prophecy, um, the monster movie. The monster movie, yep. as the poster says. As the poster says. The monster movie. Bold. Which, um, bold, but kind of earns it in a way. I mean, I listen, I love the poster for this thing. I, I do, too. I love the poster It's great. For this. And it actually gives some foreshadowing to what's going on in the movie, surprisingly. No, I just... There's some really cool stuff. Like just a great classic horror movie poster. Yeah. It's just, I, uh, I, I dig it. For, like, a B-movie classic horror movie, in before, my opinion, now. Before Photoshop. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, yeah. So, let's get into Prophecy. So, we get, like, um... In the very beginning, we get a search party. Yep. We don't... So, I don't... What Do we know what they were searching for? I know they were... Um, they I know had... that the the guy who runs, like, the logging plant mentioned it. He did, but I can't remember what... There were some were people who were for. missing. All we know is the search crew, because they all have headlamps. There's two, like, bloodhound dogs that are, like, kind of following a trail, right? And they're, like, running after something. Yep, so we get, like, credits while they're running after something. So already I'm engaged. Yeah. I'm like, okay, lizard brain engaged. They're chasing <laughs> after something. Already something's going to happen. And it does pretty immediately. Like, um, they're searching for a while, and then the dog, one of the dogs, literally runs off a cliff. Yeah, and they're, like... And they catch it, and, and they, they're, like, trying to pull it up. But they're just, like, whatever they're 
like sniffing has to be down there. I was pretty impressed with the scene because they also had a scene. They literally had a scene. They didn't have to go this hard, but no. they had a scene of a dog in a harness that, that like was like being like trying to pull quote unquote pulled up a yeah. pulled up the cliff, and it looked pretty convincing. Well, it is like. I mean, it is the. It is a dog being pulled up by a harness. But they're like pulling it up, and then like something snaps, and they pull it up, and the fucking rope's just empty. So then a few of them go down. They they go. They go down. Go down the cliff. One of them is with the dog, the other dog, and he's looking down, and he's like trying to call out for them because he doesn't know because they're not making any noise. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you hear screaming. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, shit. So he, like, he gets on his gear and he starts like, propelling down. And then he slips. and Falls, hits his head, and then he starts screaming at something. And then you hear, like, this growling sound. And he starts screaming at something. And then it's the next day. And we get this, like, and... somber <laughs> music. And you then just... we just get bodies. I love this because it, like, it, it start... literally starts with this beautiful sunset. Uh, sunrise, right? In the forest. Sorry. Sunrise. I don't know why I said sunset. <laughs> Um, and then, <laughs> then we get a fucking, one of the helmets just floating in the water with blood, with, like, dripping, blood on it. dripping onto the light. And then we get a dude hanging. He's for, like hanging dead on the rope, dead on the rope. And then we get two dudes just with their heads smashed in on the rocks. Yeah. And then cut to, uh, like an orchestra, one, which is one of our main characters playing in the orchestra, but she's kind of like, this is the wife. Yeah. Um, she she's... plays cello in the orchestra, but she's distracted. Yes. Um, so she in, looks concerned about something. Then immediately when it's over, her friend is like, you should tell him. Like and he, then, he can't make you like get rid, like get an abortion or anything. Like he, so you, immediately first, <laughs> first character, first full fledged character. We already have commentary. We already commentary. have, uh, you know, ideas because she, you get the implication that she wants a kid to quote unquote fix the relationship and the husband doesn't want to because he's busy with his work saving the world well we also understand that like he's kind of cynical about bringing a child into like a this world really fucked up world especially when there's Um, because we don't uh, by this point we don't know what he actually does yet Mm -hmm. but um we know that he has this like world view that like things are really messed up and it's a bad time to bring a child into it well especially his whole thing is also like how can you bring a child into the world into this world when there's so many kids that like just need a home exactly like that like there's like starving people everywhere like and there's orphans and yeah but we see him we also get a quick snippet of like uh like a protest it's like a Native American protest about, like, them, like, like destroying native land. Land rights. And, like, pushing back Native Americans. Um, and it, then after that, we get the husband, and he's with, like, a... He's, like, a health... Public health person. But he goes with, like, this ambulance to, like, this very kind of run-down neighborhood. And they walk through, like, this really just run-down apartment, and they go to this room, and there's, like, a baby crying, and... Well, and, like, the woman's explaining how the landlord said it was just chicken pox. But she's like, well, no, there's rats in here. Like, you know, like, I think the rats are, like, eating, like, trying to, like, bite my child. And then she's like, well, when I told him about the rats, he said, well, the rats need a place to live, too. And he's just, you know, he takes the kid to the, tells them to take the kid to the hospital. But he's just, like, you can tell this is what he does day in, day out. He well, because he's, he's also frustrated because he's also, like, we get this, like, um, other guy coming over. Um, he offers him, like, a job. But he's also saying, like, you know, like, um, I, I love how, like, the woman, the, the woman also mentions, she's, he's like, well, like, where does your landlord live? And she's like, he lives with the rich rats. Yeah. And like he doesn't um, live in this, he doesn't live in this building. Exactly. Well, and like <clears throat> he's even explaining to his friends that he's like, if he calls the landlord about the rats, nothing will be done about it, and then he can file a lawsuit. But then they'll just give him basically a slap on the wrist, and like nothing will be yeah. done about this situation. Like nothing will happen. But then the friend tells him, well, there's the situation going on in Maine where there's this logging company. And so it's a paper mill. Paper mill. It's a like a bunch of loggers, like that are gathering wood for a, a paper mill, and then the natives that live in the forest are trying to get them off. Yes, but they're basically like, 
and now it's like they they need someone to go there and like look at all this stuff and basically say like if the logging company is indeed like violating environmental standards that they have to leave and the natives would win but if they're not then they can stay and he basically tells like this is like your chance to possibly do like some actual change right in the world because all you have to do is prove that this logging company or this paper mill is actually polluting yeah like the forest and like doing something wrong and um he's like it's gonna be take two weeks of your time like you and it's no big deal you and your wife can get out for a while it's not gonna be a big deal right you know but this is a movie so um, <laughs> um <laughs> and uh, they fly and him and the wife they they fly over there they meet the um the guy so, so like I actually like I, well. Uh, so this is a character that is really well done, in mm -hmm. my opinion, because when you first meet the the head of the company, the head of the company, he's like a really nice guy. He talks to the wife about her cello and like knows the wood that it's made with and everything, and knows a lot about the land and like is very welcoming. Um, but I love how like the juxtaposition because he's actually not as good as you think he is in the beginning right well because anytime he because they they have they mentioned to him like well what about all the like the natives and every time he talks about them he's just kind of like dismissive well he also he also mentions this like ridiculous notion that they're um thinking that there is a like ancient uh native uh like deity yeah in the forest um, I can't remember the name. I of can't it, remember, but it, but it's it like plays this, into it. It's like yeah, it's like has cat eyes and like um, that there's kind of this plays like, into it. This mysticism that going there's on this, in the forest. This creature in the forest that is gonna protect them. Yes. But also, while they're introduced to him, we see like a dog harness from a helicopter, and our main character is like, "What is? What's that all about?" And he mentions the the thing about the search party. Yes. And that they can't find the search party now. The only thing is that this dog showed up at a ranger station. So the only witness they have to this horrific event is a dog. Yeah. <laughs> and they go to where this, like, where they're going to stay, I guess. Well, so they go, they're trying to go where they're going to stay, but there's a blockade. It's a blockade, and they're basically telling them, and it's a blockade with, like, the Native Americans there. And it seems great. Um, <laughs> this is, like, there's so much going on in this scene. Because immediately, like, the, the t there's immediate tension, where they're saying like, like you can't come through, and then they're saying like, well, the Supreme Court says like you have to let us through, and they're like, whose court is that? Well, and then the owner of the mill does like again, like he's like really nice at the beginning, right? And then he's like, you know, you're like, oh, okay, I'm like, he's kind of dismissive about him, but like he's he's not like evil, right? And then he orders one of his like lumberjack cronies. To like threaten them with a chainsaw. Well, because there's like um, there's a, there's a chain. There's a chain across like the the road, yeah. and it's tied to two trees. And he basically tells the fucking lumberjacks to cut down the trees. Yes. Yeah, so they like start going, and then um the the main John John um he he grabs an axe and he's gonna defend he's gonna defend this tree getting chopped down because of course they don't want to stop the blockade. Yeah. So the lumberjack um, like starts threatening him, and like they start getting close, and you think something's gonna happen, and then John gets frustrated and like does finally like take a swing at the guy because he's like waving the chainsaw way close to his face yeah. and everything, and we get a fight, and so like the guy, the environmentalist, uh, not the environmentalist, the uh, public health guy, well he's immediately he's like, trying to stop all of this because he's like, why are you doing this? Yeah, like why are you like antagonizing them he's like we can just like we can just walk we can walk it's not um, a big deal but the know. guy's like no like we have to like show them that we're strong yes and so. we get this fight and eventually um john falls over and the guy's got like the chainsaw right up to his face and then he just is telling john's i think it's his wife to basically unlock the fence and he's like no don't do it like we have to protect the blockade and everything and she gets i mean legit like understandably like very yeah. frightened about this whole scene she unlocks it and she gets pressured and she unlocks the gate um and they go through and they get to get to the cabin in the woods right but it's this very tense scene and it's like it's just 
It's great. It's really, it's really well done. I'm not. There's gonna a lie. lot. There's a lot going on. Yes, it's great. But yeah, they get to the this cabin. I think our guy starts swim, starts fishing. Yes, so yeah. he starts fishing and like he's catching this fish, and then we see a duck to the behind, like behind him. He looks at the duck, and then we see a fit like the duck go under, and we see a fish like a, a giant very fish, big fish, yeah, like come out like surface and then like go on back underwater and we're like you know of course it's saying that the fish ate the duck like it was so big that yeah. it ate the duck and there's and something then, going on with the water yeah and he and then you see like um the next scene um the wife she's cooking and he's just telling her about this thing and like but they're kind of like they don't think anything too weird's happening there yes but she's just making him a nice dinner it's all tender everything's good Nothing crazy. Um, what happens next? It's not the raccoon attack. I know something happens between then. Oh, another thing that we forgot to mention is uh, the fucking... Um, oh, my God. When they landed the plane at like the in the forest, there was a family there. Oh, right. Yeah, that's right. And it was like a, a family that was just going to go There's fucking... There's like two kids and a dad. And a mom. Oh no! Sorry, it was a it was a mom and a kid and then a dad. Yeah, but yeah, they're gonna like right. go rough it in the woods. Yep. So they're gonna they're backpacking through the woods and they're getting all prepared and they're like, well, we're gonna walk there and everything and you know. So anyway, um, we get us. I think I think after this we do get a brief scene of like them walking through the woods. The family, they're just like walking through the fucking woods and the daughter's like just done with it. She's listening to music on like a walkman or whatever yeah so then we and, then, and then but we, the dad he sees something or hears something yeah but he thinks it's nothing and then it like zooms in on the trees and you hear the growl yeah um but now after they finish dinner um he like hears something outside mm -hmm. and he goes to check it out and like a raccoon's like convulsing as if on, it has like rabies like or something. on the on the porch yeah and then it just suddenly starts attacking him it attacks i think it attacks the wife it's straight up and just... Well, because I remember it runs up on his leg and then it, like, jumps to her, but he, like, grabs it and then it starts attacking him. And he starts fighting it off with, like, a... Like, an oar. And then eventually he, and like... And he, like, slams it against the wall and, and then if... just fucking yeets it into the fire. Into the fireplace. And... And then it's, like, the next day. And there's, like, a... A canoe race or something and the wife's watching it and then we get the guy on the phone he's like no i've sent you some samples it's not rabies like it's not rabies and like he's like no i did sample it but i'm not sure like it's inconclusive i don't yeah. have the right equipment to test it um, so he's talking to someone but we know it's not rabies there's something something's up with the forest so he gets off the phone and immediately john walks over to him and wants to talk yeah Wants to, like... He wants him to see something. Yes. He wants our main guy to see something. But he immediately talks and says, like, you know, I bet you think that, you know, we're all just drunks and we're all just useless. Right. Like, that none of this matters. Well, he's like, and he's like, but I can prove to you that something's going on. And I can prove to you that, like, this spirit is here. That basically, um... Because they're talking about the... the, the the, the deity that's yeah. uh, like in the forest well also like um because another thing he mentions is like the the forest is like their livelihood yes because it's not just like their little because they take them to like where they live and it's like these like little like TVs. right because they live off the land but he says like it's not just like this little thing the whole forest is like us it's a living breathing yeah. thing basically saying like how important it is that they keep this forest and that the paper mill does not win um, because if they do then it means the, like the end of their everything their civilization so they take him to this chief and the wife comes along yes but they take him to this chief and he's talking to them and they look at him and they see that he's like he's smoking a cigarette but he's got like scars Mm -hmm. on his fingers well, he's, he's also acting kind of like disoriented mm -hmm. and he's like he almost act like acts like he's drunk yeah um but not like completely like because drunk because you know there's the whole stereotypes about yes. native americans mm -hmm. yep this movie's but got, uh yeah. this subverts that so like because it's not actually alcoholism um but he's got yeah like these like scars around where he's holding a cigarette and they they just and they immediately think that like oh he's 
may like maybe he's just a drunk. Maybe right, yeah, they make there. assumptions already, and so he's like, "Well, you know, we like get all our food from the river, and like this you know, is like the that this is basically like the Garden of Eden, and the, but the grandpa kind of mentions like that everything here is like bigger. bigger, like it's you know something's like in the water that makes like, things grow bigger and stronger." Yeah. So the, he proves it by showing them a tadpole he caught, and, and it's, it's like the size of a fucking catfish. It's huge. And the and the main guy's like kind of looking around, and he's baffled. But he sees that there's these like logs just kind of resting in the water, sitting there. Yeah. So he gets an idea, and then the next, but you're not sure exactly what he's thinking yet until the next scene when they go to the paper mill. Yeah, the guy they go to the paper mill, and the guy shows them the whole process, tells them they just they only use chlorine. Everything's yep. safe. Everything's fine. They don't fine. dump any chemicals into the water. Like, nothing's going on. Like, he, he swears by, like, everything. They test the water every week, he says. Oh, like, another thing I want to mention. In the previous scene where they were talking with the natives, the um, John's wife mentioned, like, that there's that she's seen, like, um, children born with, like, deformities or just, just stillbirths. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Well, he, um, and we also... The husband mentions that um, he saw a salmon that was huge. Yeah. Like, that could eat a duck. That he knows so like... something's up. But after this, because the guy tells him, like, yeah, everything's fine. There's nothing wrong with the paper mill, but he's not he's not convinced. No. So they're leaving, and he, like, the wife accidentally steps in, like, a thick pile of mud. Mm -hmm. And so they're on the boat, and he's like, he's like, um... He's like, what's that silver stuff on your shoe? And like, she's like, she's like rubbing it. And he's like, is it dry? And she's like, yes. And he's like, you know, in, in, uh, in college in what was it like medical school in medical school, they said there's only one type of liquid that that is dry or like, yeah. And it's mercury. Yeah. And he, he gets an idea. Um, and he starts investigating it and basically everything lines up. So they're using so literally everything. So what they're doing is they're um, to do like an anti like mossing agent. Uh, they're using mercury to like kind of like keep moss and stuff off the logs, so they can use them to run through the paper mill and mm. without like any like issue. Um, but all that mercury is going into the water and, and everything that infecting everything that lives the water. Everything that lives in the water and everything that eats things out of the water and drinks from the water so basically everything lines up yes the fish the fucking um the native american like the things they saw like the stillbirths that they talked about um the grandpa not basically like the fact that he doesn't feel the cigarette literally burning his hand and that he's like kind of loopy because, because he's ingesting mercury. like, And the base of how mercury poisoning can make people seem like they're drunk. Um, it can affect, like, animals. Make them seem like they have rabies. Everything lines up. Yep. And then he starts reading this medical thing about mercury. And saying how it can affect fetuses. That's like when how, it starts. Yeah. How it can affect the fetal wall and cause deformities. And it's a mut mutagen, right? So he's like recording all this audio and the wife is hearing all of this and at this point we know the wife is pregnant and but he she, doesn't know and he doesn't know at all and he's just spouting all this stuff about how horrible it would be if something was pregnant and like ingesting this and we we know at this point <laughs> that they did in fact ingest a they, they ate the fish that was caught in that water well and then she's kind of asking him like well how much would it take and he's, he's like, like very, very little, little now yeah. And he's just saying it would be like, it'd be kind of catastrophic if anything happened like this and everything. And the whole, t I, I like this scene is really effective because they build tension with only you and the wife knowing that, yeah. that she's pregnant. Right. Because yeah. at this point the, the dude doesn't know. And he's just like, he's just fucking spouting all this stuff because he has no idea. He's just like, whatever, like mercury can affect fetuses and whatever. And, but like that's you, when the mutation you and the start. wife both know that like holy shit she's pregnant and she fucking like ate mer mercury yeah so like the baby could be like mm -hmm. mutated uh, on the scene before this when they were talking about the um old man he mentioned to them like well they mentioned the like 
this legendary creature. And the native said, like, yes, it's it's a real thing. It basically, like, when we're in danger, it'll come and help us. Yes. It'll help fight for us, so to speak. Hint, hint. So now, while they're, like, you know, while the wife's freaking out, we get a scene of the family, the camping family. And this is our, the scene that we've seen from the movie. Um, they're all sleeping. And uh, one of the, the wife hears, like, a roar. And so she gets up and immediately the bear starts attacking and we see this like really fucked up just like it's like a like, fucked up bald half of its face is like all melted and like yeah like just mutated and then it has another half that's like kind of like a bear but like not really it's but, like really patchy fur all yeah. over its place and it's just roaring and <laughs> and it supposedly it kills the the kills everybody the two parents but then we get a scene of the the kid like getting up out of a sleeping bag hop, uh, trying to hop away and it gets he gets smacked so hard into a fucking rock that he explodes iconic it i love this scene i think about it all the time i think it's hilarious and i think it's actually like pretty well done in the context of the movie <laughs> it's fucking hilarious to me that they like that they did that like in all seriousness, too, it's like it's not like a funny scene. It's not meant to be comedic. It's no, just, it's just it, they just were like they exploded hey, a child. Let's just yeet the sleeping bag into a rock so hard that it explodes. And like, I mean, honestly, that's pretty bold because that's a a basically a child exploding on screen. <laughs> yeah. Like, think of the implications <laughs> of that. That in 1979. On screen, we have a child exploding in a sleeping bag. It's beautiful. I, that is bold. That's pretty bold. It's fucking great. Um, <laughs> Jesus. So now, um, when, well, well, now the now they're back at they're at like the Native American village, and the guy's testing all the blood because Everybody. he wants to see how much mercury is in the food they've been eating and the water they've been drinking. And the wife's like looking around and she's just very Well, she's nervous, she's still obviously. Nervous. For and then like... she sees like there's like a pregnant woman in the village and she looks at her and she gets she's thinking about herself. So then we see the Rangers pull up with the with, sheriff. With, with the sheriff and the 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 paper mill like CEO. And they're like And they're gonna arrest John because they think he murdered the family. Because they found the bodies. Right. Well they found the fucking body parts. The remains of these this poor family that went backpacking. And they're about to arrest him and then John punches one of the guys and he fucking breaks his goddamn nose open and runs the fuck away. But they're still like have everyone leave. Like they're gonna fucking kick everyone out yep and they're just gonna take everything basically as and evidence they um they're flying away but then they're with like the the telehelicopter guy like to basically land at that like campsite right because they want to investigate what happened um and if there's any like evidence to show that um like this is like not the work of john obviously something else so they tell him to land, and the guy's like, "Well, the weather's getting really bad, so like, you know, we we can't it's risky. we can't take our time here." Yeah, like basically saying like, if anything goes wrong, like they they won't be able to leave. That's what we in the movie industry like to call a setup. That is, <laughs> and they land, and immediately we see like these very deep gashes in the trees, and then there's one of them that's like, it's like it's eight way feet up. high, yeah. And they're like looking, and he's like, "This can't possibly be a bear." And he reaches up and he and they, gets like, it's like a fucking piece of fur attached to like this like bloody, like very weird looking like skin kind yeah. of. Well, and even the, the woman, the uh, John's wife doesn't know what exactly it is. She has no idea. Yeah. Oh, and John, John does John show up. John show up, shows up. He grabs like a boot cause he's going to investigate it too. Cause he wants to prove his innocence, obviously. So then we hear this weird, like roaring noise. Well, cause the... The wife, like, the wife of the main character starts feeling kind of sick. And you know why. Because she's pregnant and because of everything going and on. And because she's ingested but the mercury guy's like, and the guy's literally just told her that, But know. the pilot's like, oh, it's just air sickness. And then she leaves. She, she goes to the river. She's putting on, like, I don't know what you want to call it, but she's going to, like, cover her hair, kind of, with, like, this, like, little, like, almost like a handkerchief. But it flies away. She goes to get it and you hear this fucking, like, noise yep this like squealing noise and she looks 
because before the guy mentions like you see that like net over there that's the poachers use that to catch everything that's coming down river Mm -hmm. and she looks at it and she starts freaking out yep and then everyone comes over and she's like look and then they look over and you see two like just fucking mutilated mutated like it's like a bear cub bear cubs like there's two of them one's dead and the other one's alive the other one's alive and they're like both like stuck on this net and they just it 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 looks like the big one with like the one face side of the face that's fucked up and the other one that's like has like patchy fur all over it but it's just it like it's very effective though it looks creepy it looks it looks like very just it's fucking bleak it, it looks gross it looks very mutated. It looks like it's in, like, an immense amount of pain. Yeah. There's a lot of, like... It's just very visceral. It's, like... It's great. It, it is... It's awesome. But the... Our main guy, like, he takes it and he's, like... This is, like, the evidence. He's, like, we need to keep this one alive and we need to keep it warm because we need to prove to everyone that this is, like, what's happening. This is, like, the irrefutable proof. So they, like, they, like, try and, and get the helicopter guy, like, the pilot to, like, fly away. He's, like, the wind is dangerous. way too bad. Like, we have to go somewhere else. And they start walking because they know that, um... There's, a, like, a little village nearby. With, like, the teepees that they yeah. visited earlier. It's nearby. So they're going, and they get there, and, um... They start like they start warming up this thing. They bring coals into the TP, like put it underneath like this like rack thing they have, and then like our main character. The... Our main character tells them to like you know if you can like get the newspapers, get like the re- the logging people. He puts come... a, like the bear on like a kind of like a morphine drip. Yeah, and so one of the guys goes to get the like uh, the paper mill guy and the sheriff and like a reporter. And um, while they're waiting for them, they just take care of this bear. And uh, John, like, hides in these underground tunnels they have underneath the teepee. And the wife of the main character just, just keeps getting upset. And he's, like, talking and he mentions, like, like this is what they've been talking about, this thing. It's, like, it's almost like, as if, like, their prophecy is coming true. Yep, this is, like, irrefutable proof that this, like... And this is irrefutable proof that the water has been contaminated. And, like, we can do this. And and... we're going to show everyone that this is what's going on. And, like, you know, we can stop this from happening again. But she's upset. And she tells him that she's pregnant. And that's when he realizes it, what she's uh, freaking out about. Yep, she says she's pregnant. And he's like, well, we can take care of it. And she's like, I'm not going to get rid of our, like, child. Yeah. And basically saying, like, I'm not going to abort this baby. Like, and he's like, well, we'll, we'll, we'll try and figure it out. We'll get through this. Yeah. But you can tell he's, like, upset because he didn't, he doesn't, he obviously doesn't want a child. He, he didn't want a child to begin with, much less a, uh, like a, a fucking a mutant. potentially mutated, like, grotesque child. Yeah. And it's, it's heavy. It, this is some, some dark, dark stuff here. Um, and the fucking logging guy, like, shows up with the sheriff. He goes in there, and he looks in the tent, and he sees this fucking thing. Well, and I love I love this scene, because the guy, the main, the environmental guy, um, sorry, the health guy, he's like, did you know? Did you, did you know this was happening? And, like, literally the guy, like, is in shock. Yeah. And he, like, goes outside the teepee because he doesn't want to look at the bear anymore. Mm. And he's like, did you know? And he's like, I didn't, I didn't want to know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, it's like, holy shit. Like, this is like, it's, it's pretty impactful for a B movie. Like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of like stuff you can take away from this. But it's um, fine because shenanigans occur. Yeah. Cause don't worry. We're still in a monster movie. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> now the bearer starts to attack like the entire like uh all the huts and yeah it like it's just havoc everywhere it like rips apart some of the like the the lumberjacks and some of the like the sheriff's officers and stuff there's a guy that it starts a fire and a guy tries to drive away and a fucking car explodes there's like a guy that sets on fire yeah he like but they lays all, down and he's still on fire and everything they all like run down into the tunnel yep so and they're like, hiding in there and they're just hiding and all you hear is just this thing walking around roaring i and... do really like 
how they set up these shots yeah. in this tunnel because it it feels very claustrophobic and stressful because yeah. it's these extreme close-ups on these like on their eyes and they're like sweating and they're dirty and they're like just you can tell <laughs> they just like they're in a really fucked up situation and I love it because they set up the shots where it's like you can see multiple characters in, it's in called, the frame. Um, the, what they call it is a split diopter. Yeah. Where you basically have like a person who's like close up and they're fully visible. And then you have a person kind of in the background, but you can also perfectly see their face too. So mm -hmm. they're not like blurry. And it's just lots of those. And But I love great. it because it, it just gives that whole feeling that they're like just clumped together in this horrific claustrophobic like horrific uh like um situation yeah and oh man it's so good i i, I really like this movie and then uh and then one of the the stupid sheriff because eventually like it quiets down it's quiet for like two minutes and, and the sheriff like, tries go going up he's like he grabs one of the lanterns and i'm like don't do it don't. and immediately he like gets his head up out of the tunnel and you hear the roar and you just hear a crunch and then he like slumps back down and his head is like his like half of his face is like caved in. Yeah. With, immediately like, with, with claw marks. Fucking immediately. And then it's like the next day. Oh no, we also get a really fucking awesome shot of uh um, Yes. Oh god, the, this, uh, this shot is really cool. The chief. Cuz the the thing is just like walking around this like burning campsite. And you see the chief, like, looking at it, and he's got, like, eyeglasses, and you just see, like, the fires. The reflection of the fire in his eyes, and it's it's literally, like, um, fully framed in each eye, so it looks like his eyes are on fire. It's great. It it looks so cool. Like, it, it, it's such a badass, <laughs> like, setup, like, shot. Like, it looks legitimately cool. It's probably my favorite shot of the whole movie. Yeah, same. Like, um, it's, like... That's, like, gonna be in my mind for a yeah. long time. I like that shot a lot. So, um... That's the next day. And so they're, they're trying, trying to figure... To... They're trying to figure out what to do, obviously. Um, because they're gonna go back to the village, obviously. Because that's, like, the closest place with any, like, people. Right, because they can't really get in the helicopter anymore because, The like, pilot's... He's done, though. So. Yeah. Then none of them know how to fly a helicopter. And they're like, well, we have to go there. And then the... Um, the paper mill guy mentions like, well, there's like a, there's like a radio tower here around here. I'll go, I, I'll go I, for help. I know the woods and I know where it is. So I'll go get help. And so they start walking in one direction. He goes up to the radio tower and of course he goes up to the radio tower and he hears a noise and you see like a rotting, looks like a fucking rotting bear fetus. Mm -hmm. And then you hear the roaring. And he, of course, starts running away. There's a fucking fence. It's locked. He tries to crawl underneath it and gets crunched. And just crunched. This is the one of the only scenes where we actually don't see what happened to him. No, there's no aftermath. He just he's gone. Like it's off. So we only get a scene of like his half torso, and then you hear a crunch, and he's dead. Like we don't see any violence, but that's because they were saving it for a lot of other things. So yeah, there's more later. Yep. Because the other, everyone else, they get to this village and everything's cleared out. Oh, like, they like ransacked it. They didn't leave anything like anything for them to have to help them. And then they're they're just kind of sitting there, like getting set up. But John runs off, and he finds a like it's like this like almost like a utility truck. He and basically calls it like almost like it's basically the equivalent to like a forest tank kind of thing yeah um all like off-road it's that. gonna like help them out immensely because it's a heavy duty truck and he thinks it can handle like off terrain and then they and they basically say that like it's way too dangerous to just sit here because this thing can go through anything which pans out to be true so they put the pilot on top of the truck and they uh, and they, they get they all get into it and they're driving through the woods and it's super dark um, our main guy is like, there's like a little spotlight. He's kind of looking around. I, oh man, there's so many scenes in this that makes so much sense to the narrative too. So like, um, he's like searching around the spotlight and like, he can see his wife is like stressed out cause mm -hmm. she's holding this like bear cub and, um, he's like, okay, like here, get in front with me. 
and like she like cuddles up to him and they're both holding this Here. like mutated like <laughs> <laughs> fucked up bear cup. like their own baby and it's like they're they're holding it like it's their own fucking baby and yeah. it's just like it's ooh, it's great mm, it's good setups good shit man i missed this <laughs> like man i missed this shit <laughs> and they keep driving and like the music kind of ramps up and you're like oh shit something's gonna happen but then nothing really happens and they're just you see a spotlight going around, and then suddenly it shines on this fucking thing, and it just... And it roars, and then just immediately knocks the fuck o like, this truck over Knocks it the fuck over, and the thing, like, the little mutant cub starts biting the woman, too. Yes. Like, starts biting her throat as they're trying to, like, escape, and they're all running away, and... And they're, like, the trying to... The helicopter pilot is, like, screaming, but he's, like, stuck... And the thing just walks over and just munches his head off. It, he gets decapitated. And they're running through the fucking woods. And they lead to this, like, the lake. And they, like, start swimming across it. While this bear is still, like, this cub is still chewing on the wife's, like, neck. And eventually, like... I mean, I don't know if this is, like... If this is what they're, like, going for. Because the husband grabs it from her. And basically, it, like throws it away which I again mean, he, could be t it could be construed as the because he's the one who didn't want the child uh you know, message message um so they swim across and they find the cabin that the wife and husband were staying at and this bear like they're like trying they're relaxing on the dock well because they see the bear because they're, like, like they're finally like across the lake well because they see the bear like they they think it's they, th they see a standing on, like, the other side of the river. And then it starts, like, coming in. But then it just, like, sinks down. They're like, oh, thank God. Okay, cool. And then they think it's drowned. Yeah, he, like, can't swim. Like, he can walk. He thinks he can just walk across the lake. And like, he can't swim. He's fine. And then we see, like, a bubble. And then another bubble. And, and it, gets then, like, and it gets closer and closer. closer. And they're like, oh, crap. And I'm like, run! Wh why are you not running into the cabin right now? Like, I mean, the cabin the probably won't help you, obviously. And then it fucking run, jumps out, and they run in, they barricade, and the... Do you think that helps at all? Well, we, we see how much it helps. So he gets a rifle off the wall. He With two blows, bullets. There's two bullets, oh, two, and then um, John gets his bow and arrow ready, and they're just sitting in this absolutely dead silence. Until you hear the breathing. Yes. And it comes in, and then the fucking roof just it flies like, off. Yeah, the whole roof caves in. And then it starts like, and then um, the husband shoots shoots it, and it like backs up, and then it's silent again. And you're like, what the fuck? And then and the whole the whole front end of the fucking cabin comes off, just explodes. And <laughs> yeah, and the husband shoots it again, but it's all fucking futile. And then John like fires a couple arrows into it. It's hurt, but. But then they start running and like he yeets John. Like, it just throws him so hard. Because he's trying to notch another arrow and he like he gets it ready and then the bear just yeets him. Just yeah, and he's dead. And, and then it, and the husband like gets tries to notch an arrow but like can't get it right. And the thing picks him up, and he like takes the arrow and just starts stabbing it, like everywhere. Eventually, he gets it in the eye, and, like, a PG. This fucking, like... It, like, pops, and, like, fucking blood just gushes out of this fucking eye. PG. Yeah, and PG. this, Yeah, and, like, this thing just... It dies, falls in the, in the water. And he's, and, like, like... He keeps, like, stabbing it over and over again, right? Yeah. Because he wants it dead. <laughs> PG. Yeah. And then they're, like... We see, like, an airplane it's flying away. The wife's like in a in like a hospital, like a bed, and, and the husband's comfort comforting her, and and they're flying away. You got the happy music. Yep, and it's all beautiful and everything. And, and then, then it's like a shot from the ground. A completely different mutated bear pops up, pops up roars, and roars. End end movie. End Kino. Oh my god! Oh, this movie. This is good. It's really good. I honestly really legitimately lo love this movie. 
Um, I think there's a lot going on here. There is indeed. Uh, for a B movie, this is one of the more complex one, especially this year we've watched. Oh yes. Uh, God, there's a lot to unpack here, and there's a lot of like implications and a lot of stuff they don't show that's implied. Like, will their baby turned out kind of fucked up? We don't know. Like, it probably honestly yeah. like it's pretty bleak. Like I don't know. Like this whole movie is pretty bleak, um, and it's basically like an allegory for like you know if you dump toxic shit into a water like there can be serious repercussions to that yeah it's it's taking that whole thing to like an app to the very next level but i've never seen it done this way where it like mutates a bear right yeah well in this movie it's not just a bear it's literally everything and i have to i have to give credit to the special effects team yeah holy shit they did a good job it looks it looks creepy it looks good um there's like a lot going on with the design and i appreciate every little detail they put into it because it looks like a bear that was injected with a bunch of mercury and it left, looks fucked left, up left to just fucking run its course and so, so does the little one the cub. yeah the little cub is fucked up too and there's a lot of like good animatronics mm -hmm. and the even the roar is kind of creepy. Like, every time it roars, you're just like, ew. Like, it was God. <laughs> what would you, uh... Shady to Pretty, what would you give us? Honestly, I mean, if we're going pure entertainment value and, like, decent, like, didn't have to, like, want to turn it off at all. And yeah. almost no nitpicks. Honestly, do we do... We do ten, uh, t I mean, 10 out of 10. I mean, like, 5 out of 5, <laughs> yeah. whatever rating we give it. But, like, the, it top marks for me yeah honestly like i actually like this movie i love monster movies i love shit like this it just it's it speaks a lot of volumes and i wish more people have seen i, yeah. I wish i wish that it was more talked about because then i would have seen it earlier oh yeah you know what i mean like it's it's one of those movies where i wish that i knew about it before this podcast before this podcast because yeah. i actually would have like really liked to watch it before beforehand yeah so. like what would you give it um i would say i mean high marks for me too um i'd give it a nine yeah um my only like nitpick that i would have to make because i mean I'm, I'm not i don't really nitpick movies to begin with but my only like nitpick is like i the ending is like it's kind of sudden it's kind of shoehorned in i am gonna be honest that is like kind of like it's a good nitpick because that's the problem I had. Like, they didn't really do any implications with, like... It's kind of sudden. Yeah. It just, like, ends. Now, I I mean, don't get me wrong. I love a good fucking, you know, monster cliffhanger thing. So I don't mind that. But it's just, like, you know, all these people die. Monster dies. And then it's just, like, cut to airplane flying away. And, like, it's just... It's very sudden. I mean, it could have been worse. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It could have been a lot worse. But if the ending just kind of had a little more to it, it would have been a 10. Mm -hmm. Because the whole movie has a lot going on. And, like, the ending just feels very quick. It does feel quick, but in my opinion, it kind of makes sense. Because it's like this whole water system has mm -hmm. been polluted, right? So it's like it's not going to just be one bear oh, I, or one animal. That's I'm fine with that. Like, right? Yeah. So it's like... I don't know, like, I kind of like the, like, ambiguous mm. ending where it's like, this isn't over. Like, oh, yeah. I mean, they they just literally stopped the logging thing from, like, doing it again. But they, the damage has already been done. Uh -huh. And I think that's kind of maybe what they were going for. Like, you know, like, oh, yeah. damage has already been done. There's nothing you can do about it. Like, shit's already fucked up. Yeah. Um, I do agree that I wish they maybe would have had a little bit more of, like... Closure? Maybe, like... For the characters, at least. Yeah, at least a little bit of closure for, like, the wife or something. Because, like, she's a really strong character in this movie. Yeah. And, like, the fact that she, like, kind of keeps it together through, like, being pregnant and knowing that she <laughs> ate Mercury and knowing her baby's going to be messed up and hiding it from her husband <laughs> and then her husband implying that she that she should get an abortion like there's a lot of like there's a lot going there's on there's a lot stacked up against her and i think she's a pretty strong character to be honest um i wish there was more closure for her cuz she was my favorite character in the whole movie actually yeah well, well she has the most so, i mean she had the most like stakes yeah the most right. going on 
Like, the husband was a good character, too, but I think he was kind of just like that one-dimensional, kind of mm. like, you know, he just, he looks out for people, he's a good people person and everything, and he's just like the... He wants the, to save the world. The good guy of the of the movie. I think there was a lot more complex issues going on with the wife. Yeah. Um, and, like, John, to be honest. Like, John's a really good character, too, um, portrayed by... Like, he's been in a lot of stuff. Oh, he's like been in so like much. A, like a character I think this actor. is one of his first movies, but yeah. yeah. Um, um, but I don't know, like, I loved the characters, so I wish there was more closure for them. I think, I th I thought it was kind of bold that they just, like, John's such a prevalent character in the entire movie, and then they just kill him out of nowhere. Like, yeah. that's not a nitpick. That I didn't, I just didn't expect oh, that yeah, they like, would do that. And so, like, just quick well i think we have forgot to mention the chief also gets like as they're swimming across the lake they look back and the chief's like standing there because he thinks that he's this trying is, to talk to it this is like a protector yeah and then it starts like just like tossing him everywhere we see he, he like lifts him full up full ragdoll yeah yeah that happens i don't know like this movie is pretty like edgy for being a pg movie from the 1970s like the late 1970s and i just didn't expect this much and that's why it gets a 10 out of 10 for me just because it subverted like all my expectations of what this movie oh yeah was gonna be what it could be um and i think it's just like i can kind of i do agree with you that the end ending could have been better but like i can kind of look past it because yeah. i loved so much of the movie well, here's the thing. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't ruin it the It does movie. not ruin it at yeah. all. It's not one of those endings where it's like the movie's really good and then you watch it and you're just like, oh, well, the ending sucks, so everything's ruined. Yeah, no. I hate that. I really do. And I'm glad it didn't... I think it could have been better done, but it didn't ruin it. No. So, I don't know. Like, Prophecy's fucking awesome. If you like monster movies, you owe it to yourself to watch this movie. You know what time it is, Will. It's time... Because we've reached the end of this year and decade. And decade. I am really surprised that we reached the end of the decade this quickly, but I'm glad because the eighties are our aesthetic. So it's it's coming. Eighties is fucking awesome. It's time to uh It's time to do our awards. Our end of the year for the awards. Fucking, which this shouldn't be too hard. Oh, I think you I guys did not have to do a lot of thinking you, on this. If one. you guys remember any of our other episodes you, from 1979 you'll know immediately which all these categories are going to fall under well except worst for... of the worst oh god well i mean this one's obvious come on there's one movie we hated one above all Indeed. fucking others there's and one I potato think we can both agree and i'll speak for both of us when i say motherfucking fuck savage water savage water is the worst potato it was filmed on a potato and um potato all the, actors all the actors are potatoes and this plot is potatoes and fucking just everything sucks about <laughs> that movie it just it sucks everything out of you it's not fun to watch at all oh no and most of you most people would turn it off in the first like 10 minutes and they'd I guarantee be right it. and they'd be good too because there's nothing of value in that entire movie nothing happens it is it is a non-movie I've never seen a movie trying so hard to not be a movie. No, it's... It's just a bunch of friends hanging out, being filmed on, on a potato, and they all fucking suck, and the plot is terrible, and the murderer is the worst murderer ever because he loses his wife and decides to kill people in the same way that his wife died. I have no fucking... Dude, it's stupid. It's fucking dumb. It is bottom of the barrel. It really is. It like like we said, it's probably one of the worst movies we've ever seen. It's it is. It is the worst movie I think I've ever seen. Like yes, Uwe Bowles are on a whole nother bracket. Whole nother but yeah. normal movies. That's the one. This is the one. It's it's the worst movie we've ever seen. So of course it earns worst of the worst. Best of the worst. Um, I don't know. Are we going to agree on this one, too? Because, um, honestly... There's really only one I could even... Mine is Weasel's Rip My Flesh, because... That's the one. It's the one that's, like, kind of bearable. It's entertaining. Out of, out of the other stupid shit we watched. Because it is... Because I can't give it to, like, Kill the Golden Goose. Fuck because no. that's just fucking dumb. It's not, it's not the best of the worst, because it doesn't earn that title. It doesn't earn best. Um, not... The Dark is fucking stupid. I fuck that movie. At least... Okay, Weasel's Ripped My Flesh, at least it's only an hour long. It's entertaining. 
It, and it's entertaining because you're going to make fun of it the entire time. And it is absolute homebrew. It really is. And, but hey, it's entertaining. And there's so much wrong with it that it's hilarious. There's so much nonsense happening on screen. And I give it points because it has a diorama scene where you literally have miniatures in front of giant ass trees in, in the background. Bold. It, I cannot believe they did that, but they did. But at least they had a miniature. Yeah, well, yeah, they did. And it, as they, bad as it was, they lit it on fire, and it was great. They lit a little fucking turd on fire. Yep, yeah, with miniature trees that are literally right in front of big ass trees. It's fine. Like actual trees. It's it's great. But it's so, entertaining, and yes. that's something the other movies, the other shit movies, couldn't do. Seventy nine was a weird year because we only got three like actually decent movies. Well, what is the best? Honestly, the, the best, the best. I was okay. So here's the thing. I went through it because, like, I mean, the Victors was never going to get best of the best. I think it was only good because of all the other shit we watched, and it was finally a breath of fresh if, air. If, if well the other, acted. if the other two contenders didn't exist, then if Victors would get it. Yeah. But I was going to give it to Disco Godfather, right? Because that movie's actually pretty good. There's a lot of shit to like in that movie. Entertaining the as hell. The drug trips are insane. Great. Um, I, love, I love how, like, just kind of, like, visceral the statement is. And they just go for it. How and in your like, face it is. like, yeah. drugs are fucking bad. Stop <laughs> doing them. And, like, I just love how in, fa in your face it is. And Disco Godfather was going to get it. Um, because it has my man, Rudy Ray Moore, and I love him. Legend. Um, but I have to give it to Prophecy because, honestly, it's a more entertaining movie, and I think it has a better premise. I think it has, um, more going on, better special effects. Well, it's a more whole... Yeah, it's like a more well-rounded movie. Yeah. It's, um, the, it's the whole thing. Yeah, you get the entire package with Prophecy. Yeah. Disco Godfather, I liked the whole, like, PCP trip and everything and, like, the whole story going on, but it had a lot of, like, breakup, like, it had a lot of scenes where they were just doing disco to have disco because it's called Disco Godfather, and it's like, I understand that, but there was too much of that sometimes. Yeah, I mean, um, don't get me wrong, I did enjoy those scenes. Cause you I did enjoy them because they were get really... Rudy Ray Moore yelling what was it jump on it yeah oh put your weight on it yeah put your weight on it over and over yeah. so it was, it was like it, it was great it was bright the fashion was there like, it's entertaining there's a lot of entertaining stuff but, but prophecy all together had a better story it's a better actual movie yeah and better like just better designed characters and like, oh yeah special oh. effects oh so. yeah I do appreciate the special effects in Disco Godfather. Don't get me wrong. I think they were really good, actually, for what they had. For how little, yeah. For how little they had. But, like, I, honestly, Prophecy, do I have to I even ask what yours is? It's Prophecy. Yeah. No, Will, it's fucking um, Psychotronic Man. <laughs> it's oh, the fuck. fucking movie where a man um, falls asleep and his car floats and then he gets powers i still that movie stupid is fucking dumb as hell oh my god no it's it's prophecy prophecy is um is my this is very much our jam it earns like the goat of 79 for our podcast like this is like this is one of those movies that like i could recommend for people who just want a fucking movie in recent memory and i'm i might be wrong on this i think it's one of my favorite monster movies that we've watched in recent episodes yeah of the podcast even in like 78 or 70 mm -hmm. um seven is i can't remember all the movies we watched but um i think it's one of my favorite like creature features that we've watched on the podcast so far yeah um just because i love the premise i love the message behind it um there's a lot of cool shit going on in there's a movie. lot there's a lot of content in there yeah and it's a good director um i i don't know if this is one of his first movies but no it's like no. a middle middle of yeah. his career but um, it's good i mean it's i don't well, know why the fuck he did this but i'm glad it's well done um you know i i don't know like i have nothing really like bad to say i guess you could maybe if you wanted to really nitpick it for 2020 you could say that the native american actors like some of them weren't actually native american but who cares? Like it's a seventies movie, and I mean, I will say, I will say this: um, the depiction 
of Native Americans in this movie isn't bad. It wasn't like stereotypical which like I they liked. are it, it wasn't like a bunch of like drunk native americans yeah it's like... not it's not stereotypes it's not people in fucking it was pretty respectful but yeah. i guess you could you could argue that they should have used actual native yeah. american actors but you know in the 70s i don't know how easy that was Look, to come well, by or whatever but it like, could have been like what was it claw what was the fucking movie claw uh, was it claw the bear one with the old native man. What's that? It was either Claw or Grizzly. I don't think it was Grizzly. No, it's not but... Grizzly. I think it's Claw or Claws. Yeah. But, yeah, it could have been like that movie. This is also the best Grizzly Bear movie we've watched. Technically, yes. Yes. Grizzly was good. Grizzly was it was alright, but this is... Um, but this is way better. This is the one. This is this is the one. Um, watch it if you like, just like nature versus humans kind of thing. Shenanigans. Uh, watch it if you like monster movies. Watch it if you like kind of socially conscious 70s movies. I mean, it's still pretty topical for today because oh, yeah. this shit kind of goes on all the time. So it's like, I don't know, like it's still topical. It's still relevant. Yeah. Um, you know, and it's just like a cool, like they kind of made like. Godzilla in the forest, but like with a different kind of mutagen, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. It's good. It's really good. Um, prophecy, man. I was not expecting this, but yeah. Um, other news: we have a live stream Sunday coming up on next Sunday. Sunday, next Sunday. So a week from now, um, we'll be streaming on the thirteenth. Um, six hours for your enjoyment. Go on our YouTube, subscribe, hit the bell, um, maybe give us a like. Come there and chat, um, you know, ask us questions, kind of talk about your favorite movies, whatever you want to do. Talk um, about Prophecy. We'll be there. Talk about Prophecy. If anyone's watched it and wants to talk about Prophecy, I would love to have a conversation about Prophecy. Talk about the dark. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if anyone follows along and watches the movies we watch. I... I, I'm sorry if you I mean, do look, sometimes. I know, I know, there is one of you that watched The Dark, um, you commented on our video, <laughs> apologizing for <laughs> recommending it to us. Uh, yeah. Um, so, hey, listen, we at least there's that. We, we forgive you, but what the fuck, man? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, look, we've all, uh, we've all seen some things. Yeah, I don't know. The, the Dark was a rough one. I mean, perfect for our podcast, so thank you for that. It was indeed perfect. But also, what the fuck? And, I mean, we would have watched it anyways. Yeah. But thanks. But thank you for the suggestion, and what the fuck for the suggestion. <laughs> give, give more. <laughs> um, also, give more suggestions. We'd be happy to do them. Um, even if we've done... Like, if we, even if we pass the year that you want to Oh, yeah, we'll go back. Or we can go back in, like, a special episode. As long as it's... Uh... You know, a fucking movie that's... Drop us a line. Somewhere I can watch it. You won't get anywhere without communication, okay? I know we're a small podcast. I know that we don't have a ton of followers, but who cares? If you want to, if you want us to review something, like, this is the perfect time to do it. Give we, it to we me. We won't even charge you for it. Give it to me. Yeah, exactly. Give it to us. We're doing this for fun, okay? For free. We're doing this for free and for fun. So just give us suggestions. And I <laughs> hope you're listening and I hope you're having fun listening. So, because that's what's really important. Yes. Until we get an ad sponsorship. That's important. <laughs> but... <laughs> you know, the, the, it's, those are the important things. For like, now. Like mutant bears in the woods. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Don't pollute the waters. Or else... Uh... The prophecy comes true. <laughs> yes. God, this movie's great. I think uh, that's it. Yeah, I think we're done. Um, for they mostly put, come out at night, this has been Will. This has been Alex. Uh, we will talk to you all later. Bye. Bye-bye now.